This is a Ryzen 7 2700X CPU with a 3.7 gigahertz base clock and a 4.3 gigahertz boost clock. It has eight cores, 16 threads, and is currently paired to 32 gigabytes of DDR4 memory. This is an Arduino Mega 2560 clone. It has a 16 megahertz base clock, a 16 megahertz boost clock, one core, one thread, and is paired to 16 kilobytes of SRAM. Now the question I have today is how many of these will it take to knock this offline? So then the question is, how can a 16 megahertz Arduino knock a multi gigahertz, multi core server offline? It has to do with an idea of multiplication. Let's just say that we are asking the Arduino to do a quarter's worth of work, 25 cents worth of work. Well, when it sends that request to the server, that server may have to look up things in the database. It may have to do some other kinds of checks. So essentially the server could be doing a dollar's worth of work. So the Arduino sends one request that's basically a quarter and the server has to do four quarters worth of work. Now, let's say that you come up with something particularly hard for the server to do. It might have to do, let's say eight quarters worth of work or 12 quarters worth of work. But the idea is that the work the Arduino has to do is relatively small compared to the work that the server has to do. In the earlier days of the internet, this was often done with something as simple as asking the server for the time. A computer could ask the server with just a couple of bytes, what time is it? And the server would have to respond with kilobytes of information telling it what the time was. And so you get this amplification effect of 10 and 15 and 20 times. That is called a denial of service attack. If you have this doing enough work to keep this busy that other people can't access it, then you are denying service to those other people and you have essentially neutralized the server. So the obvious next thought is that if one Arduino is good, then maybe five would be better. So we are essentially asking each of these Arduinos to do 25 cents of work and they are causing the server to do massive amounts of work. This is what's known as a distributed denial of service attack because we are distributing the requests all over the internet so that the server has to do massive amounts of work and can't distinguish which one is a hacker and which one is a legitimate person trying to access the site. And that's how you can essentially take some tiny low power devices and generate terabytes of traffic on the internet through a distributed denial of service attack. I thought it would be interesting today if we could visualize this in real life. Now, there are a million different ways that I could skew this in favor of the Arduino or in favor of the server. So take all of this with a grain of salt. But the idea is I set up a bare Apache server and I'm asking that Apache server to display a web page. And just to generate a little bit of traffic, I am refreshing that page every second and a half and incrementing a counter so that you can see, hey, the page is reloading. And the idea of this is this is what a typical person who was visiting the page would see. They would see a basic website, nothing too heavy, and you'll see that with no Arduinos attacking the system, it works really well. So what exactly am I doing with the Arduino? Well, I'm not trying to teach script kiddies how to do DOS attacks on servers. So the, the very gist of what I'm doing is I am making the API call over and over and over again on this Arduino as fast as I possibly can. And that's it. I'm not doing anything fancy. I'm just hitting the API as many times as I possibly can every single time through the loop, hitting it and seeing how long it takes the server to crash. So I'm on the Ryzen system right now, and as you can see from the task manager, we're using somewhere between 8 and 11% of the CPU. And a big part of the reason for that is that I'm actually running the screen recording software on this. Uh, when I'm not recording, I'm down around 2% of CPU usage. So, I mean, we're putting a little bit of load on it from that. So I've let this run a little bit and make sure that everything is stable, everything is good. And um, what I'm asking the Arduinos to do now is to hit the API. And this is really where I could cheat in one direction or another. 
But essentially what I'm doing with the API is trying to simulate what happens when a new user signs up for a website. So you're basically doing a couple of checks in the database, making sure there's nobody with that name and email already in there. You are, we're gonna generate a random password for them. We're gonna hash that password, store it in the database and do a few logs. But essentially it's what I would consider a very moderate workload for an API to do. The database is under 100 kilobytes, so it's not like it's a massive database and we're asking it to do a lot of work. So let's see what happens when we connect the first Arduino and let it begin hitting the system. I have the ethernet jack plugged in and we are up and I can see that right now it has just begun hitting the server and you will see that the CPU load begins to spike a little bit. We're, well, I guess more than a little bit. We're at around 27% CPU usage. So this one 16 megahertz Arduino is taking up essentially another 15, 20% of the server resources. Uh, but as far as the front end user is concerned, the server is soaking this up really well and we are running just fine. I've allowed this to sit here for a little while and you can see that there's some pretty drastic spikes in the CPU usage, but overall we're hovering at around 25%. So let's go ahead and connect one more Arduino. And I can see that one is firing off some queries and now you can see CPU usage rising 45, 46%. And we are taking up more of the CPU. Now the web page seems to be functioning fine, although we are definitely using more close to half of the CPU's capacity. So let's go ahead and plug in two more Arduinos and see what happens. As the fourth one goes online, we should see ourselves getting pretty close to 100% CPU utilization. And uh, as far as I can tell though, the website is still loading well. The server is able to balance it and we are not having any issues with the front end yet. As you can see, JavaScript is starting to crash. We're not seeing the performance metrics in the browser and we're not fully loading the web page every time. I had only flashed five megas, so I needed to flash a couple more and I gave the server a little bit of a chance to cool back down. Plus my office was getting crazy hot. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and fire them back up one through five and then I will add the sixth one into the mix. We are back up to 100% CPU utilization. You can see that the front end is working, but uh, we are slowly seeing the JavaScript crash and take longer, but we still have access. So let's go ahead and add a sixth Arduino. At this point, the server is completely unresponsive. There's nothing I can do. I can't load PHP my admin. I can't load anything in Apache at all, the server is completely down and will stay down as long as the Arduinos are hitting it and may even require a complete reboot. Four Arduinos were basically enough to use up 100% of the CPU's resources. A fifth Arduino started making the front end unresponsive for guests and a sixth Arduino completely knocked the server offline. So I'll spend all the time in the world talking to you guys in the comments about methodologies and sharing with you what I did and why I did it and all that kind of stuff, but that's not really the point of this video. It's not just about looping through and hitting APIs with Arduinos. The most important takeaway from this video is that these things that we call IoT devices are not just devices, they're computers, and in some instances, their servers. And so the fact that you have these computers that are often not updated, not patched on your network, turns these from just simply devices to potential weapons. And so you need to understand that people are out there on the internet looking to find ways to take advantage of these devices and use them to wreak havoc. I'm going to make some other content about things you can do to protect your own network and your own PCs from the different things that these devices can do. But in the meantime, I want you to think about what they can do to other people. Therefore, it is extremely important that if you have an IoT device on your network, that it is updatable. 
Mistakes happen, but a lot of times these devices leave the factory and never get a single update. And so the firmware on these things can be years old and you don't even know about it. If you see that your internet is all of a sudden running slow, consider unplugging your IoT devices and see if they're what's sucking down all of your bandwidth. I'm going to do a lot more IoT security content, but I just wanted to put this out there. I just wanted to plant this little bug in your ear that a tiny device like this can wreak a ton of havoc in the right hands. So, hey, thanks for watching. Stay safe out there. Have a great day.